If you need to start a vehicle in the shop after following all the protocols of getting it ready, one of the problems is that sometimes the battery itself does not have enough electrical charge to actually start the vehicle. So in that case, we're going to have to use either one of our battery chargers with a boost function or the little booster pack or the roll cart charger which also has a boost function to actually provide the electricity to get the vehicle started. So um, one of the things I want to point out is if you look at this battery, look at all the green corrosion on here, all the rust on the terminal here for the negative terminal, that should all be cleaned before we even attempt to start this because that alone is going to create a lot of resistance. All right. So I want you to keep that in mind if you have to actually start a vehicle is to make sure the connections are clean. But not only do they have to be clean, they can't be loose like this because that also creates a very poor connection which creates a lot of high resistance which prevents proper current flow to flow from the battery down to the starter motor down below to actually crank the engine over. So let's say that you've now got these good and tight, you've tightened them up, they're nice and clean, and we do have to use, say, this charger here. So if you're going to use a charger that actually plugs in, keep it unplugged, all right? Keep it unplugged until you, all right, you're going to first put on the, the positive and negative connection. So black is negative, red is positive. I would highly suggest you put the charger in a little container like this so that way it can't, if it was sitting on the vehicle, number one, it could fall off and break. Number two, uh, we should never just set anything on the vehicle because that's not professional. All right, so you're going to connect, make sure you got a good connection. Now, make sure you know which one's negative, which one's positive. I'm going to undo this here. There are marks actually on the battery. That says negative. That says positive. So you can go by that. But secondly, I want to point out this round diameter for the negative is smaller than the diameter of the positive. So the positive has a larger diameter post than the negative. So there's your second indicator. But please make sure that you have them on the, these connectors these alligator clamps on the correct polarity. So that's on pause, that's on neg. I still have it unplugged. I'm going to choose my settings here. I'm going to charge it. So I want to put on charge. It's a 12 volt battery, so I chose 12 volts, not 6. And I'm going to put it up to 15 amps. I'm going to let it sit for a while at 15 amps. And this is a maintenance-free battery, so I'm going to choose that. Now we can come over and plug it in. Uh-oh. There we go. All right. So it's plugged in. Now, here's another problem. I don't want to see this. Someone's going to trip over this. So put it in such a configuration to make it so it's going to reduce the risk of someone tripping. Okay? And this needs to be plugged in here, of course. So I would plug this one in also. But I don't want to see cords out in the open where people walk. So that's how you use this uh, charger. Now, if we were going to use... So I've, I've already got it... By the way, that's still unplugged right there, okay? Make sure you have it unplugged before you take these off. Otherwise you could create a spark and since this battery was charging there'd be a lot of hydrogen gas built up around here and if we create a spark that could ignite the hydrogen gas and that could go right back through the vent back into the battery and actually make it explode. It's a very small risk but it is a real risk and we have to give respect to the danger that batteries can create. It's full of sulfuric acid and lead and if this ever exploded like a bomb the amount of damage it would do to the vehicle and to you especially is what really matters um, I don't want to risk that so please make sure when when you're going to put these on that's disconnected when you're going to take these off 
that's disconnected. Okay? Alright, so let's unplug it. There we go, it's unplugged. So we can take these off. Alright? And when you do put this away, make sure you put it away neatly over at the battery table over there. It's over there by the yellow cabinet with the other uh, batteries. Now when it comes to this booster pack, it's very simple to use, but two things. Make sure it's not sitting in such a way that it could fall off when the engine starts. Okay, so make sure you have it in a, a spot where it's not going to interfere with the fan or anything else that could damage this or that this could damage something else. So it's, make sure that's secure. And make sure this is off. Okay, so it's off. Now we can take our two connectors off, the positive and our negative, so we would put those on. Okay. Make sure it can reach. See, this, it has pretty short cables here. Cables are pretty short, so you got to make sure they're on there. And make sure that's secure, so it's not going to fall off the vehicle. So, once you have that on, then you would turn that to on, go inside the vehicle, start it, Engine's running, come back out, turn that off, then take these off to prevent sparks. Okay? If you ever want to know how much uh, power this has, there's a little battery status light, so when I push that, okay, it's showing green, right? That's the high end, so it's good to go. Alright? It should have enough power. And when you're done with this tool, and you've got it put away, or you go to put it away, make sure you plug a electrical cord into this and into the wall outlet so it will keep it fully charged all the time. Alright, so that's the booster pack. Lastly is the roll cart charger. Same idea, before you put these on, make sure it's disconnected. All right, make sure it's disconnected. Put these on your battery. Make sure it's a good connection. All right. Also, make sure before you plug it in that this is off. So there's the off button. All right. So make sure it's in the off position. Um, then you can go plug this in. And then make sure you got it on 12 volts. Now there's different ratings. There's 12 volts at 10 amps. 12 volts at 60 amps. This is the boost charge. 12 volts, 80 amps. So normally, if we want to start a vehicle that has a, a poor battery, we would put it at 12 volts, 80 amps, and we've, we've got these on, we've got that plugged in, then we would put this over to about 30 minutes. You're not going to let it sit there in 30, for 30 minutes, it's just, we're just going to move it to 30, it's a number we can pick, and then you're going to let it sit for just a couple minutes to charge, then you're going to go inside the vehicle, and start it. So let's say the vehicle started now. What you're going to do is you're going to come back, you're going to just bring that over to off, alright? You're going to unplug it, and then you're going to take these off the battery of the vehicle and neatly, and neatly just curl them around there like that so we can roll it properly, okay? So that is our roll cart charger, our little stationary charger, and our little portable booster pack. All right, so we got three different ways of starting a battery in the shop if it does not have an electrical charge of its own to start the vehicle. Okay, uh, please remember sparks are our enemy in here. Uh, sparks can create Sparks can ignite the hydrogen gas that comes out of a battery and if it did ignite them and it made the battery explode, sulfuric acid from the battery would just be all over you, okay? And we don't want to make sparks either because it is a working shop so there might be fuel fumes and we don't want to take the risk of igniting those fuel fumes. And last, uh, red, positive, black, negative.